In the last video, we saw the fraction 9 eighths. And we actually saw this in two ways. We saw it as a length, and we also saw it as a count, where we started with our pizza cut into eighths. And then we took out one of those eighths, and we said, OK. So here's an eighth of a pizza. And then we made nine copies of that eighth. Right. So nine eighths of a unit length, nine eighths of a pizza. And the thing that we noticed about that length of nine eighths is that it's longer than a unit length. If we take these nine eighths and put them back together, Try to put them back together and see how much of a pizza we've got. Well, here's my pizza. I want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eighths. All right, that's one pizza. is the same as 8 eighths of a pizza. If I want to have 9 eighths of a pizza, well, I need that 8 eighths plus another eighth. In order to get another eighth, I need to get another whole pizza, right? If I want to give you 9 slices of pizza and my pizzas are cut into 8 slices, well, after I've given you all eight slices of the first pizza, I need to get another pizza. And now I give you one more piece. This is one eighth of a pizza. And we see that when we put them together, eight eighths of a pizza plus another one-eighth of a pizza. That's what it takes to make nine-eighths of a pizza. Just looking at what we have in this picture. When we put them together, we have nine-eighths of a pizza. We could also think about that as one pizza plus one-eighth of a pizza is 9 eighths of a pizza. We could write that instead as 1 and 1 eighth pizza. Looking at these unit lengths again, right? we see that we have a whole unit length plus an eighth. So in terms of unit lengths also, we could say that 9 eighths is one whole unit length plus one-eighth. Okay, what's going on here? Let's introduce some terms to describe what we're seeing. A proper fraction is a fraction that represents an amount that's less than one. So for example, three-eighths, if we draw it as a length, that's shorter than one whole unit. So 3 eighths is a proper fraction. Another example might be 1 half. Again, if we draw that as a length, that's shorter than one whole unit. Uh, one more example, 3 fifths. Once again, that's shorter than one whole unit. Those are all proper fractions. How can we recognize these? We can recognize a proper fraction because its numerator is less than its denominator. So that makes sense, right? To represent less than one whole unit, less than one whole thing, simply means the number of pieces I'm taking is less than the number of pieces required to make up a whole unit. 
So that's a proper fraction. An improper fraction, then, is any fraction that is not proper. So, for example, we might have 9 eighths, or we might have 5 halves, or we might have 5 fifths, right? 0 up to 5 fifths. Notice, that's exactly the same as one whole unit. That's still improper, right? We can recognize improper fractions. Well, if it's proper, the numerator is less than the denominator. If it's improper, the numerator is the same or more than the denominator. Thinking about this again in terms of what the numerator and denominator mean, that just means we're taking at least enough pieces to make up a whole unit. Now keep in mind, just because something is an improper fraction doesn't mean that it's incorrect in any way. When we say that a fraction is improper, we don't mean that it's wrong. We don't mean that it needs to be re-expressed. We don't mean that it has to put on some pants if it wants to continue being a number today. We just mean that this is a fraction that represents a quantity that's at least one whole unit. Right? When we say that it's proper, we don't mean that it's right. We don't mean that it's in lowest terms. We just mean that it represents less than a whole unit. One more idea we need to introduce in talking about these quantities that are more than a whole unit, we need to talk about the idea of a mixed number. A mixed number is a number expressed as a whole number part plus a fraction part. The fraction part must be a proper fraction. So for example, the mixed number we saw earlier, 1 and 1 ninth means 1 unit plus one-ninth of a unit. Notice the nouns here, unit and ninth, are different. So as we saw previously, we can't just add the one plus the one, right? One and one-ninth is one plus an additional ninth. We read this number as 1, the word and, 1 ninth. So this is the name of the whole number part, and this is the name of the fraction part. Now, what if there is no whole number part? What if we want to describe a proper fraction? Well, the whole number part could be 0. We could write 0 and 3 fifths though typically we'll just write three-fifths. And the fraction part could be zero. We could have three and zero-sevenths, though again, typically, unless we have some point we want to make by it, we would just write the three part. If we want to go between fraction notation and mixed number notation, that's pretty straightforward. It's just a question of thinking about what the problem is asking us. Suppose we have the improper fraction 7 thirds, and we'd like to write that as a mixed number. We could do this just by drawing the picture, right? So here's a number line. I cut each unit length into three equal parts. And then we take seven pieces like that. And here we have seven thirds. We can see what mixed number that's going to be, right? Because we have two whole units, and beyond that, one third. So that would be one method, would be drawing a picture and seeing. That works great for 7 thirds. If we had a larger 
numerator and denominator. We probably wouldn't want to do it that way. Method two is, well, I mean, what we're trying to do is put groups of three-thirds together into whole units. We know that we have seven-thirds, and we know that it takes three-thirds to make a whole unit. That sounds like a job for division. Seven-thirds divided by three-thirds per whole is going to give us, well, seven divided by three is two remainder one. So that's going to give us two whole units and one third left over. So seven thirds equals two whole units and one third. The third method is we can use our calculator. We notice that the easiest way of entering 7 thirds on the calculator is as 7 divided by 3. Notice if we just hit enter after that, the calculator goes ahead and converts that to a decimal. How do we get a mixed number? Okay, so I'm looking at this and I'm seeing the whole number part. The whole number part is the part before the decimal point. It's the 2. To find the fraction part, I'm going to use the fraction part function. So I'm going to go to the math menu. I want to do something to this number, so I'm going to choose num. And I'm going to choose number 4. This command says f part. This is the fractional part. So when I choose that option, either by scrolling down to it or hitting the number 4, this is what I see. Now I hit second and then this minus sign key to input the answer. And then when I hit enter, I see just the fractional part. Finally, I want to actually convert that to a fraction. In order to do that, I'm going to press the math key. And the very first option says arrow fraction. That means convert to a fraction. And there we go. That gives me the fraction part. And I get 7 thirds equals 2 and 1 third. Okay, so that's how we go from a fraction to a mixed number. How do we go the other way around? Well, to go this way we used division. To go the other way, we're going to use multiplication. Now, method one again is going to be to draw the picture. So let's say I wanted to write one and three-fourths as a fraction. Right, method one would be the picture. So one and three fourths. I'm interested in fourths, so I'm going to split each unit into four equal parts. I'm going to draw the length one whole unit followed by three fourths. And then I'm going to count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I find that one and three fourths equals seven fourths. Second method. Well, we want to find out how many fourths one whole unit is. Right? One unit times four fourths per unit is four-fourths. And so one unit plus three-fourths is the same as four-fourths plus three-fourths 
is 7 fourths. Right, so we multiply the whole number part by the denominator, add in the fraction part. Method three, again, we'll use the calculator. This is a little bit easier in this direction. First, we'll enter one and three fourths as one plus three divided by four in parentheses. So one plus three fourths. And then we just want to convert that into a fraction. So we'll just choose math, choose the very first option, two fraction, hit enter. And we get the seven fourths that we expected. Now, which method should you use? You should use whichever method is most convenient at the moment. But you should be aware of the non-calculator methods because one, those will help you get kind of a reality check on your answer. And two, those will help you to understand what's going on as we move into more complicated sorts of problems.